The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. Well, welcome back to True News. I'm Rick Weil. Since 2007, True News has been in the forefront of exposing one of the greatest scandals in the history of the American Republic. I'm talking, of course, about the illegitimate election of Barry Sotoro, alias Barack Hussein Obama, to the presidency of the United States of America. Four years later, it is abundantly clear that Barack Obama is an imposter, a criminal who has committed numerous felonies while in public office. It is also abundantly evident that there is an active, ongoing, widespread conspiracy involving key people in the national news media, top political activists, and officials in the FBI, and U.S. intelligence and national security agencies to conceal the truth about Obama's true identity. One of the leaders in the fight to force government agencies and officials to deal with this criminal conspiracy is attorney Leo Donofrio. And he is a partner in the law firm of Pigeon and Donofrio. Uh, Mr. Donofrio, welcome to True News. How are you doing? I just let me just step in on, on your intro and clarify a few things as far as what my role in this fight has been. First of all, uh, you mentioned you started this in 2007. I didn't come into the picture until October 2008. Yes. When I, uh, at the time, I, I was looking into the different arguments regarding both Obama's eligibility and McCain's eligibility, and I, to this day, I believe that Obama was born in Hawaii and that we know who his parents are because and 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 that based upon his own information that he's provided he's not eligible because his father uh Barack Obama senior was never an American citizen he was never even a legal resident alien and therefore uh, according to a Supreme Court case from 1875 uh, Minor versus Happersett he is in the White House, and he is holding the White House contrary to United States Supreme Court precedent, which says that a natural-born citizen is someone born in the United States of parents who are citizens, plural. The policy behind that, of course, would be that you wouldn't want the president to be a dual citizen or to have dual citizen tendencies or affections for another nation. Uh, and if we go back to the history of the origin of the term, John Jay was the one who originated it and suggested it to George Washington, and it was specifically to check the influence, foreign influence on the commander-in-chief's office. And the Supreme Court, the, the, the only standing decision which decided as precedent, which construed Article II, Section 1, which is the Natural Born Citizen Clause, the only United States Supreme Court case which had construed that clause is Minor versus Happerset, and that case has never been overturned. It was superseded. Part of the holding had to do with voting rights, but that part of the holding was superseded by the 19th Amendment, but the part of the holding that dealt with citizenship was is still good law. And I, I just want to say, since I'm a lawyer and I deal with evidence, when you say President Obama is guilty of crimes, I cannot go as far as you and the other people who are saying that, because... Uh, the, the issue is a very, it, it, it's been made cloudy, it's not that cloudy, but there is arguments on the other side for his eligibility. However, they fail when you look at Minor versus Happerset. And I, the president, being a constitutional scholar, would have known that. Do I think he knows he's ineligible? Yes. Is it a crime to hold the office in elig- you know, and not be eligible? I don't know that it's a crime, but it is. A tendency, it is, it is a condition which makes someone who's discovered to be ineligible, their presidency would become void, okay? So I, I, I don't know if I can call it a crime. Well, uh, well, well Mr. Down and Frio, the reason I am stating so strongly that he has, committed, he has committed felonies is because I have, over the years, I have interviewed numerous experts in various fields. I've, I've interviewed um, a number of licensed private investigators who have clearly 
document it that he is using, fraudulently using, a Social Security number assigned to a man born in 1890. I have, I have the okay, documents I, here in my office. I have printouts. I have, I have seen those, those arguments, and I, I, the thing is, being an you know, investigator, being a lawyer... I would have to cross-examine the people involved. Of I would course, have, and every know. and every one of these experts that I've interviewed have all said that they are willing to okay. be I, to be I'm examined. Not to, I'm not on the show. I understand, and I know, but you you brought up this point, and this is why right. I'm I'm stating that I personally believe well, he is openly are, committing all, criminal right. acts. You don't know if he is involved in a criminal act because you don't know who got him the social security number and at what age that happened do you see well I mean, he's using people, he's using it well 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 I'm mr donofrio wait wait a minute i mean I, I didn't want to go down this direction but you've brought it up it, it is abundantly clear that he is he has used this social security number in numerous places right, where he has he has know, lived when he was assigned that social security number and who told him that was his social security number if his if, if, if it's not a real number and it's not an accurate number, then who can prove how he got that number? You see, I mean, if it's, for instance... Well, if, then that's, if, the, that's, the, reason, that's, that's the reason we should have... Talk, do you it, want me to talk at all? Or, I mean, I'm, I'm just... I, no, I, you, I, you took I it this direction. I didn't... I, I, you know, I just... I mean, I understand... Is, is the problem with the rhetoric and the reason why the issue that I am so passionately involved with does not get on the radar of the nation as it should is because there are so many conspiracy theories which are blocking the facts. And what I talk about is a fact. We have a president sitting in the White House who is not eligible based upon his own biography of who his parents were and based upon United States precedent, which is still good law, and nobody's talking about it. And everybody wants to talk about conspiracy theories. No, 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 sir. I've been talking about the natural born issue okay, for two, since 2007. That, and you should, people need to focus on that because all of this other stuff is a play. In my opinion, it's a smoke screen. Well, I don't agree with you on that. I, I, I've, I've had, I've a had a number of experts here. I'll make a prediction mm -hmm. for you and your audience. Mm -hmm. Nobody is ever going to prove that Barack Obama was born anywhere other than Hawaii, and no one is ever going to prove that he has an illegal social security number, and there will never be any criminal action against him. Why? Either. Why is it impossible to prove it's it if it's going to happen? Why? It's going, because it's not. That's why. Well, wait a minute. You, you're, well, you're saying you're certain it's not. I'm certain. I'm absolutely certain. It's a smokescreen. It's here to distract people, and it's here to make everyone who's talking about the real issue and the real truth, which is the fact that I don't care if he was born on the steps of the White House, okay, and, and given a pristine Social Security number, he's not eligible to be president because he does not fit the definition of a natural-born citizen as issued by the one and only United States Supreme Court when they stated in construing Article 2, Section 1, that a natural-born citizen is a person born in the United States of two parents who were citizens. If people want to remove him from office because he's ineligible, they should forget everything else and focus on that. Well, let's talk about uh, the evidence you have uncovered that, that the leading website that publishes Supreme Court decisions on the Internet has tampered with online documents regarding the issue of natural-born citizenship. Thank you. That is the most important thing, and thank you for raising it. That is the most important blog I've published. If people go to natural-born citizen, all one word, naturalbornsitizen.wordpress.com, they'll see my investigative report, which, you know, if we had a true fourth estate, would be front-page news, because justia.com is the online resource for the general public for researching United States Supreme Court precedent and history. And we have this, I have discovered that just before the election in 2008, uh, and I didn't, bring my, I didn't get involved in this issue and bring my lawsuit against McCain and Obama until October 2008. They were all, the Obama camp and the people at Justina who were protecting him edited key Supreme Court decisions which cited to the case I mentioned earlier, Minor versus Happerset, and these cases were edited online 
to take out the references to Minor versus Hopper set when other Supreme Court cases referred to them on the issue of citizenship. Now, when, when other cases referred to Minor versus Hopper set on the issue of voting rights, the links were kept intact. But the Wayback Machine at the Internet Archive has proven that originally, before 2008, Justia had the original citations from the Supreme Court cases, but sometime in early 2008, they edited these references so if people were researching Minor versus Hopper set on the, on the citizenship issue and the construction of Article 2, Section 1, the natural born citizen definition, if they were looking for cases that followed this case, they wouldn't be able to find them in online searches. And the reason I was able to find this out is because I knew the language from the Minor versus Hopper set so well, and I began to see quotations from it without a proper citation to the case. And I went into the Wayback Machine, and I found the evidence where the cases had been tampered with. And after, within hours after I published my case, Justia had fixed the link, but they weren't able to change the Wayback Machine. And not only that, before I published, I took snapshots of all the relevant pages. So the, uh, the issue that I argue that he's not eligible, according to Minor versus Sapposet, because he wasn't, he wasn't born of citizen parents, that was on somebody's radar at justia.com, and they edited those cases just before the election. And even before anyone, you know, I was the first person to raise this issue that he's not eligible, other than the birth certificate, which I don't believe is even relevant, because I believe he was born in, Ohio, in Hawaii, and I believe that there's enough evidence to show that. But nobody was talking about the, this issue that under my versus set, under that definition, he's not eligible. Now, Mr. And, let, well, me ask you, let me ask you this, Mr. Donofrio. Who... Uh, th this website, justia.com, uh, which uh, lawyers and, and law clerks and many, many people refer to that website for... Actually, the general, the pu general public refers to it. There are yes. other web resources right. who, that are for professionals, but Justia yeah. is supposed to be for the public. Okay, who, who owns and operates justia.com? I, I don't have... The, the gentleman's name is it's slipping my tongue, but uh, I he... He, I believe he went to Harvard Law School, and I forget the other. He worked at Find Law as well, and then he, I think he set up just the uh, after that. Find okay. Law is the other, is the other um, online resources for, you know, uh, for lots of law and precedent, including Supreme Court cases, and they did not edit the cases, and they did not tamper with them at Fine Law the way they did at Justia. Um, if people go to my blog, his name is there in the comments. Okay. The, All right, so what we what we have here is at Justia.com, a, a leading website for the general public to research Supreme Court decisions. You're telling me that sometime during the presidential campaign uh, between Obama and McCain that somebody – Either the owner and uh, the uh, the host of Justia.com or a hacker, somebody edited the Supreme Court writings regarding natural born citizenship. That's, that's exactly that's exactly correct. And that's, well, that's that sounds like a conspiracy to me. Yeah, well, that you know that is that part is a conspiracy. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank yeah, you. That, that part is a conspiracy, but here's the thing: that's proven. It's not it, you know whoever did it is the conspiracy part of it, and I'm not even alleging who did it. All I'm saying is we proved that it was done. That it was done is not a conspiracy. Okay, but what, what, you, what you need to understand... Second. Hold on a second. Yes, sir. That the tampering took place has been proven and is now in the realm of fact. Who is responsible for tampering? That we don't know. That's a, that's a, that, that we don't know, but that it happened is a fact, and that is not a conspiracy. That's right, and, and, and also... The f I mean, it's not the, a theory, it's a fact. Yes, and, and the, there is also a fact that numerous graphic artists, experts have come forward and have said that the, that the long-form birth certificate image posted on WhiteHouse.gov is a forgery. Okay, I, I, I have read those, and I tend to believe that it is, but here's where people go one step too far, Okay. As a lawyer, I can't, you still can't point the finger and say Obama's guilty of a crime because you don't know what, he, you don't know that he knows 
that what was posted was fake. He may have seen a document and said, that's my birth certificate, and then the people who put it online tampered with it to make it look fake. Yeah, and right, and, and Richard Nixon didn't know about the uh, Watergate break-in either. But until you can prove that someone did something... Okay, but, but, you, but you, can't just, you can't just assume things. But okay? Lee, uh, yes, but here's the way you get to the bottom of it. You demand the appointment of an independent federal prosecutor who brings people in under oath with the risk of going to prison for perjury, and they have okay, to... But we're going to find, okay, here's my prediction. When that happens, if it were ever to happen, you will find that Obama has the very document issued by the Department of Health, and that it's completely legit, but that the online document was tampered with to confuse you, and to keep you confused, and to keep you focused on that. But that's a, crim that's a crime. That's a crime. Somebody committed a crime by putting a false document on a government website. Well, I, uh, that, I agree with you, okay? I agree with you. But what, they're, what, what they've done, and you, you're focused, if, you're, if you're interested... In getting an, a, a legitimate president in the White House who is eligible, then if, if you continue to be distracted by things which are not going to remove him but only make your case, you see, the problem is most people, okay, they are not forensic experts in documentation, okay? They, they see the document, the, the mainstream media confirms it's his birth certificate, Okay, the Department of Health in Hawaii confirms the information, and then people, the ordinary person, cannot understand why people are still saying the president doesn't have a birth certificate. Now, you can understand it, and I can understand it, but the ordinary person can't understand it, and it just seems like you're a loony, and they've done a good job by, by creating the conditions whereby they can throw people like me, who are arguing a serious point of law, which is not a conspiracy theory, it's a legal question, they're throwing us in with the birthers, and, and the ordinary person on the street cannot separate the two. You have a conspiracy theory on one hand, and, you, and they know that you have good, a good argument that a fake illegal document was posted, okay? But on the other hand, we have a legal question which is not a conspiracy theory, and it's just a fact. He's not eligible. But while everyone is so focused on these salacious and sexy conspiracy theories that show these crimes, nobody is really interested in a boring legal question. And so how do you tackle the issue? You Did forget about the birth certificate and the Social Security number, and you gather all your forces on one point, and you apply pressure, and you do not stop. But if you're distracted, then your forces are divided. And that's what's happened with the eligibility issue. The least sexy issue is the issue that he's not eligible because he doesn't have two citizen parents. Okay? And that's, but that also happens to be a, an issue which is undeniable according to the United States Supreme Court law. But meanwhile, while everybody's been lumped in as birthers, the mainstream media, they have no interest because they have protection because we've all been lumped in together. We're all the same thing. We just don't, you know, they can label everyone a racist or a conspiracy theorist. And because people are so focused on things that will never be proven, they're able to, to group everyone together. Leo, I've heard lawyers on television argue that the 14th Amendment to the Constitution uh basically nullified earlier decisions about natural-born citizenship. Well, that's, that's completely a wrong theory of law. It's, it's not even, you know, if you look at the case where the 14th Amendment was interpreted, which is Wong Kim Ark, the case defines who is a citizen by construing the 14th Amendment. In Minor versus Hopperset, the United States Supreme Court said they did not need to reach the issue of the 14th Amendment because Virginia Minor was a citizen under Article 2, Section 1. And to those people that say Ron Kim Ark has dealt with the natural born citizenship issue, I say this. If the, if the Supreme Court in Ron Kim Ark had found that Ron Kim Ark was a natural born citizen, then they never would have reached the 14th Amendment. That's a good point. Good point. The Supreme Court, the Supreme Court only goes as far as they have to. 
Now, when they found that Virginia Minor was a citizen, they did that under Article 2, Section 1, and they said, we don't have to go to the 14th Amendment, and we don't have to construe it because she's a natural-born citizen. And, one, and, they, and they construed Article 2, Section 1, and they specifically construed Article 2, Section 1 as to the citizenship issue. In Wong Kim Wai, the Supreme Court limited its analysis to the 14th Amendment, and why did they do that? Why didn't they do what the Supreme Court did in Minor versus Happerset. They didn't do it because they couldn't do it, because Juan K. Mark was not a natural-born citizen. The Supreme Court was forced to interpret the 14th Amendment. All right, now, Leo, uh, we've, got, we've got about two minutes remaining here. What court are you going to find in America that's going to let you argue your case? Listen, here, no court right now will, but I think I understand why the Obama administration has been so focused on people like me and Steve and why we're being hounded now in the Second Circuit where we brought an appeal on behalf of 82 Chrysler dealers, and because we brought an appeal, our people who lost their businesses where a judge put a false statement in the bankruptcy court opinion, we're now being hit with, uh, they're trying to collect $128,000 from Steve and I in legal fees. Now, this is, on the Chry- this is on the Chrysler dealership issue. Yes, and I'm going to have more on that in my blog because there's been some very shady activity on the part of Jones Day, who are the attorneys that represented Chrysler, when they missed a deadline and they tried to deceive Steve and I. Okay, now you re- uh, you you and Steve represented uh, dealers who had been shut down yes, by the government yes. after a, after a Chrysler went into bankruptcy. Uh, real quickly, what was the what was the issue you were arguing on behalf of the dealers? Look, you know what? That we only have like a minute left. Yes, and we don't have time to get into the, the whole issue. But I just I just want to go back. Maybe I'll come on another time if you'll have me. But to talk about Chrysler exclusively. But let me just say what I think. What I think the game, the end game is with regard to Obama's eligibility. Now the cat is out of the bag because of what we've exposed with Justia.com. The Obama administration or people protecting him understand that that was such a dangerous case to his eligibility that they tried to Orwellian-style rewrite history. And I think they know that the mainstream media is not going to do anything and the government, Congress, and the courts aren't going to do anything now. But my opinion is, when you talk about crimes, I think what we're going to see in the future is the possibility that Obama may be the first president that tries not to leave office when he's asked to leave, when his two terms are up, if he's reelected again, or if he's not reelected this time, I think we're going to see a state of emergency declared, and at that point, there will be a number of people who necessarily wouldn't have looked at this issue who will be looking for it, because there is a legal mechanism by which Obama could stay in the office of the presidency if he declares a national emergency and suspends the election. Yeah, well, there'll, there'll be a civil war. That's what there'll be. Well, before that would happen, you may find that the same Congress and senators who are looking the other way, the emperor's new clothes with his eligibility, they may be looking for a legal way to remove him at some point. And I think the Obama administration by trying to marginalize people like Steve and I and this issue, I think that they know whatever their game plan is, and they know, you know, it's not going to, it's not, at this point, they've done a good job of clouding the issue with the birth stick and all that, but at some point, you know, if he tries to stay in office past when he's supposed to be there, I think that this is the issue that they're afraid could end whatever subversive plans they may have if they have them. All right. I'll let that be the last word. Uh, my guest today, Attorney Leo Donofrio. And, uh, Mr. Donofrio, uh, give out the, the uh, blog website uh, domain address. It's uh, naturalbornsitizen.wordpress.com. And I just want to say to you just the last thing while we were talking about these illegal activities. It's possible. I'm not saying that it's not. It's, it, it, there's no chance he's involved in criminal activities regarding the birth certificate and the Social Security number. I'm saying that we don't, we can't know for sure whether, you know, whatever Social Security number he has, we don't know when it was issued to him. We don't know what part he might have played in that. We don't know what part his mother might have played in that. That's or what, his grandmother or his family. That's I why mean, we need an independent prosecutor. Security. What's that? That's why we need an independent prosecutor. People need to be brought in under oath. This is too deep. Too many unanswered questions. And, and people have to be threatened with prison 
uh, unless they tell the truth about Obama. There's there's too many people involved in this cover-up. But uh, listen, we appreciate everything you're doing, and uh, we uh, we thank you for the stand you're taking in this battle. Leo well, Donofrio, thank you, my friend. Thanks, thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.